The story you've been told about the extinction of the dinosaurs is incomplete. It's missing the most important part, how your very existence was only made possible because of that night of fire and chaos. To understand this hidden connection, the one that links the end of their world to the beginning of ours, subscribe to the channel. The journey through the greatest catastrophe in Earth's history starts now. Picture Earth 66 million years ago, a world of giants, a paradise lost in time. It wasn't a static planet, it pulsed with life. Vast forests covered the continents, and warm seas were home to colossal marine reptiles. After more than 150 million years of dominance, the dinosaurs were at the peak of their diversity. From the massive Triceratops to the agile Dromaeosaur, they ruled virtually every ecosystem. In the sky, pterosaurs glided like living shadows. But something was already changing, even if only subtly. Recent studies indicate that some dinosaur families were already showing signs of decline, perhaps due to gradual climate changes that were making the planet slightly cooler. Earth was going through a period of global cooling, and late Cretaceous ecosystems were starting to show signs of instability. There was also intense volcanic activity in the region that is now India, releasing huge amounts of gases into the atmosphere and slowly altering the climate. Even so, nothing, absolutely nothing, could have prepared life for what was coming out of the darkness of space. About an hour before impact, the creatures on Earth would have seen what looked like a second sun in the sky, growing brighter with every passing second. The unwelcome visitor was an asteroid about 10 kilometers across, racing at a staggering speed on a direct collision course with our world. The rulers of Earth were living their final moments of peace, unaware that the sky itself was about to fall on their heads. And when it did, it wasn't just the end of an era, it was the most violent moment in the planet's history. The impact released an amount of energy equivalent to 10 billion Hiroshima bombs. The impact site, now known as the Chicxulub Crater on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, was the epicenter of the apocalypse. The impact angle, around 60 degrees, was practically the worst-case scenario, maximizing the amount of rock that was pulverized and thrown into the atmosphere. In the first few seconds, everything within hundreds of kilometers was vaporized. A shockwave of heat and pressure expanded faster than the speed of sound, incinerating everything in its path. Mega tsunamis, with waves hundreds of meters high, slammed into continental coastlines and pushed inland for miles. But the horror was only just beginning. The material blasted out by the impact, superheated as it re-entered the atmosphere, turned the sky into a global oven. Tiny rock particles, spherules, rained down incandescent, raising air temperatures enough to ignite continent-scale wildfires. The entire planet seemed to be on fire. Death, however, didn't come only through flames. The deadliest killer was what followed. The impact vaporized sulfur-rich rocks and pulverized the Earth's crust, throwing trillions of tons of ultra-fine silicate dust high into the atmosphere. This cloud of particles acted like a veil, wrapping the planet and blocking sunlight. Day turned into a night that would last for years. Without sunlight, photosynthesis came to an abrupt halt. Plants on land and phytoplankton in the oceans began to die off en masse. The base of almost every food chain on the planet simply collapsed. As a result, global temperatures plummeted, plunging the world into a long, severe impact winter. 
Simulations suggest that the darkness and cold may have lasted up to 15 years, and Earth took nearly two decades to return to something close to its previous temperatures. For the dinosaurs, there was nowhere to run. First came fire, then darkness, hunger, and cold. It was the final blow. The world they knew was gone. But in the ashes of this apocalypse, a fascinating question began to take shape. Did they all really disappear? The planet that emerged from the darkness looked like a graveyard. Around 75% of all species on Earth had gone extinct. All non-avian dinosaurs, that is, all dinosaurs that were not birds, vanished from the global fossil record at this point, known as the KPG boundary. For decades, this was the accepted truth in paleontology. The impact had been an instant and total extinction event for them. However, science thrives on questions. What if a few isolated groups managed to hold on a bit longer? That's the idea behind the so-called Paleocene Dinosaurs Hypothesis. The idea is that in some remote regions, pockets of non-avian dinosaurs may have survived the initial impact and persisted for a while into the new geological era, the Paleocene. Some researchers claim to have found dinosaur fossils in Paleocene rock layers in the United States. If true, that would suggest they might have survived for perhaps a few hundred or even thousands of years after the catastrophe. The most widely accepted explanation for these out-of-place fossils is a phenomenon called reworked fossils. Imagine a dinosaur bone originally fossilized in Cretaceous rocks. Millions of years later, river erosion could dig that fossil out and redeposit it in a younger sediment layer from the Paleocene, creating the illusion that the animal lived at that later time. Proving that a dinosaur truly lived and died in the Paleocene is extremely difficult. It would require finding a complete articulated skeleton preserved unambiguously in rocks of that age, something that has not yet happened. Most of the scientific community remains skeptical. Global evidence is overwhelming. The post-impact world was simply too hostile for large animals with high metabolisms that depended on a rich, abundant food web that no longer existed. If any group did survive, it likely never flourished and disappeared within a few generations, like a ghost population on a devastated planet. While the fate of the giant land-dwelling dinosaur seems sealed, the story of dinosaur survival takes a completely unexpected turn. And it's not on the ground, but in the sky. The question shouldn't be, did the dinosaur survive, but rather, which dinosaurs survived? And the answer is all around us. Modern birds aren't just descended from dinosaurs, they are dinosaurs. Specifically, they represent the only surviving branch of the theropod dinosaur lineage, the same group that included T. rex and Velociraptor. But why did they make it when their gigantic relatives did not? The answer is a combination of luck and adaptation. Several traits that evolved millions of years before the impact suddenly became golden tickets for survival. First, body size. The avian dinosaurs that survived were small. They needed less food and could hide in burrows, cracks, or natural shelters. Second, the beak. Losing teeth and evolving beaks allowed them to exploit new food sources that became abundant in the post-apocalyptic world, such as seeds and insects feeding on decaying matter. Seeds in particular could remain dormant in the soil for years, acting as energy reserves when nothing else grew. Feathers, which probably first evolved for insulation or display, provided crucial protection against the intense cold of the impact winter. 
and of course, the ability to fly allowed these birds to travel long distances in search of refuge and resources. With pterosaurs and non-avian dinosaurs gone, both the skies and the land were full of vacant niches. Birds, these unlikely survivors, found a planet full of openings. In the Paleocene and Eocene, they went through one of the fastest diversification booms in history, filling empty ecological roles. They became the new predators, new herbivores, and new inhabitants of coasts, forests, and skies. The dinosaur lineage therefore didn't end with a bang. It continued, quietly, through its feathered heirs. They didn't just survive the day the world ended, they inherited this new world. And that inheritance carries a deep lesson about the very nature of life. The day the dinosaurs died was not just an extinction event, it was also a creation event. The annihilation of about 75% of life on Earth, as catastrophic as it was, opened space for the adaptive radiation of the groups that survived. Without the overwhelming presence of dinosaurs, mammals, until then small and mostly nocturnal, finally were able to step out of the shadows and diversify into many different forms in a process that would eventually lead to us. The end of their world was quite literally the beginning of ours. That asteroid that struck 66 million years ago wasn't just a space rock, it was one of the greatest agents of change in the planet's recent history. The survival of birds shows us that in evolution, traits that seem small can become the key to getting through an apocalypse. The beak, the feathers, the reduced body size, these were the solutions to a crisis no creature could have predicted. The story of the dinosaurs is a powerful reminder of both the fragility and the resilience of life. For 150 million years, they were the pinnacle of evolution, the undisputed rulers of Earth. But in a single day, an asteroid struck 66 million years ago and rewrote the fate of the entire planet. In the end, the history of life on Earth is not a straight line of progress, but a cycle of catastrophes and rebirths. From the ashes of the greatest empire this world has ever seen, new forms of life emerged, proving that even after the darkest night, the dawn always comes. If this journey through time fascinated you too, show your support, hit the like button, and share this flame of knowledge with anyone who loves science. And here's the question that remains. What mystery from the past do you want to uncover with us next? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end. See you in the next video.